Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Joyer. So this is the S5, um, but it's exactly the same for the um, S10S, dual, dual wheel drive. Only difference is you won't be playing with the uh, brakes on the S10S because of the fact that it's hydraulic, they're self-adjusting, and you won't have an issue uh, like you do sometimes with this where you have to kind of adjust the cable after you do this to make sure that the wheels do not have a lot of um, drag on them. So to take the wheel off, it's the same as the front. Only difference is you have this cable here, um, the electric wire coming in. So um, as with the front, these are just caps. So you're gonna you're gonna get something in here to pop this cap off. <clears throat> now the other side is exactly the same as the front. You were to use a um, you know just a standard um, 18 millimeter socket for the other side, loosen it up. Um, obviously, be careful of all the little pieces um, that's on the other side. Now with this here. Um, a lot of people are starting to ask me, how the heck do you get this off? Because obviously this nut is inside a cup here. You really can't get a, um, a wrench on here. So I've been looking around. I really haven't found anything specific for this because like other scooters, these are flat. It's not in a cup and you can get pretty much everything on here. And then you can get a regular wrench on here. What I've done is I found just a old socket that I didn't care about. And <clears throat> if you really don't have something like this, you could go to Harbor Freight or Home Depot, get yourself an 18 millimeter socket. Um, if you go to do this, um, I do suggest getting the deeper socket if possible. If you're going to be carrying this around with you, you can get the shallow one, but you have to be careful. Try not to cut too far down into this. So what I did was I just took a regular hacksaw. I kind of marked, put it up against the wire here with a Sharpie and kind of marked myself a little area that I could cut out. And I went down to basically where it steps in. I stopped. So I cut down the sides and then I kind of cut, made a line, a little bit of a deep line here. I didn't go all the way through, not more, you know, damaging the other sides. Then with a pair of pliers, I just popped it off because this is tool steel, it's not flexible. So once you give it a good whack, it shatters. So this just broke clean off because of it being tool steel, it shatters. So once you get to this point, um, obviously you're going to put your socket in and you're going to break this loose. But before you do that, what you're going to have to do is, especially if you have a flat and you need to, you know, take the tube off your, your now home or wherever you need to get to, you get the new tube and you need to get the entire thing off. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take the screws off here. So with a Phillips screwdriver, you're going to take off this screw to give you some extra play in the line. So there is two of them. Obviously, one's out of the camera view. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just taking the one out if you really, really need to, because by taking this one out, you do gain a decent amount of you do gain a decent amount of play with this wire here. I really don't think it's too necessary to take the other one out. Usually less is more. The less you take apart, the less you got to put back together. So, you know, if you could get away with just taking this one out here, the better. So this is now free and we're going to crack this one loose here. So we're gonna come in and crack this loose. 
like this. And we're gonna come back around, grab it over here, twist. Take your time with this. Don't try not to break anything. Try not to mess up these wires right here. Once you get to the point where you can get it with your fingers, it'll be good. So. I'm able to get it with my fingers now. There we go. So you're going to have to kind of lift up on this. Straighten it out. And then push this down and away. Now you have, there's Loctite on here and some other stuff, I guess, that they put on from the factory. Um, you could get your screwdriver in here to kind of like scrape it off, break it free. And then like my other video, take your screwdriver and get this. This is the safety again in here. You're going to be prying this out just to get it away or else you're not gonna be able to slide this entire thing out. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna be an easy one. I mean, the front tire is so much easier to do, um, but this is basically what you're doing here. The other side, obviously, you're just gonna take it off, take everything off, put everything on the side, and then you're pretty much good to go. From here, you would slide this out and then do your thing and then slide this back in. So just remember with the disc brakes on both of these, as long as you don't touch the pads and you keep them apart and you slide the rotor back in between the pads, you're fine. You're, you're not gonna have an issue. If you push one to the other side or something and then you end up getting the rotor on the back of the brake pad, not where, the um, friction surfaces, you're gonna have a problem because they're gonna be touching each other. The brake pads are gonna be touching everything and the rotor is gonna be on the outside. So just make sure you get that in place. So unfortunately doing the back tire like this, it's not as easy as the front because you could stand the scooter up. This one, you kind of have to lay it on its side, get it a little off the ground, kind of work both sides and then slide it out, okay? So let me get this back on and I'll show you what you might, like my other video, what you might encounter as far as the brake goes. So let me get this put back together here. And just, just so you know, um, you don't have to tighten these nuts up with such force that you're not going to get them back on. Because with that safety and all, um, you should be fine with, you know, getting this on tight, but not killing it. It's not a lug nut on a, on a car. So you shouldn't have to really kill it to, um, to tighten it up. Now, because of the fact that I um, had a socket here, this is not um, a... 18 millimeter what I did was I found this old socket it is a six point socket and it fits just fine it's a three quarter socket so if you have also if you have a three quarter socket laying around deep socket and you don't mind cutting it you have that option too but it has to be six point if you have a 12 point, you're, you're risking damaging this nut because the six is going to grab. It'll, it's a little sloppy, but it does work and it does grab. So from here, obviously, I would put my little caps back on and I have to also put on my little screw here which is why they make it this long. I don't know. That's, that's incredible how long this thing is. And this is the stock one. I did, I did not replace this one. 
it's incredibly long. So if you have a power drill, this would be a great time for the power drill because this thing is so long. Again, a couple of people have asked me um, if I recommend tire slime or anything like that. I, I actually do. I mean, listen, if you're on your scooter and you're miles away from home or miles away from your apartment, whatever, um, you know what? Tire slime works. I would fill the tire up, you know, to about here so that it's really, it's getting all the way up. It's, it's getting all the way to the top of the tube. Because if you just fill it to about here, you're not really filling it up to the point where it's completely covering the entire casing of the tube. Yes, I know when you go fast, it's spinning and it's doing its thing or whatever. It's sloshing around. But if you go higher than the top of the tube, I feel, to about at least here, when it's rolling around and you get a puncture, say you get a puncture here or here, or something comes up inside here, gets wedged in between the swing arm and here, and you get a puncture right smack right here, you're going to be covered. Because now as it comes around to this spot, the green slime's going to pop out and it's going to seal it up no matter where it is on this tube. So that's that's my opinion. And then once you replace, you get back, you replace the tube, you put more back in it. Or you can keep a can of Fix-A-Flat, the small one, in your backpack if you have an issue. Then you plug it in, blow the tire up, at least you can get to where you need to go. Again, it all depends on how far away from your apartment, your home, or whatever you're going with this because these go quite far. And if you're commuting to and from work, speed is the um, the biggest value of, you know, you can do because you're trying to get to work and now you got a flat, you pop out your can of fix a flat, plug it in, boom, you're up and running again. Or like I said, you have green slime in here, you could just put green slime. Now, um, I recently found on eBay and Amazon they do sell replaceable tires for the this size here. Um, your size is indicated on the sidewall. Just get, like when, when these wear out, I'm going to get solid tires. I'll be replacing these with the solid tires. I won't have the actual tube uh, inside these tires. It'll probably make them a little bit uh, heavier, but you'll never ever get a flat. So let me pause the video and I'll flip this over to show you uh, what happens with the brakes. Hey guys, we're here now with one of the main parts of your scooter. Yes, obviously it's for braking, it's for stopping. But what I'm talking about is if your brakes aren't adjusted correctly, number one, you won't get the feel, the responsiveness of your brakes. But if you go too much, what's going to happen is you're going to create, create drag. Drag is a bad problem, especially for these electric scooters or electric bikes, because what happens is as these brakes heat up, it creates more and more drag. Drag is resistance, and resistance actually will equal kind of like if you're adding weight to the scooter. Lowering your miles, um, miles that you have and also the miles per hour. So as you can see here, it freely spins. Now, this is a little bit too much because right now, if you were to feel the brakes on this, you have to pull them in very far in order for this to start engaging and stopping. You kind of don't want that. So this is one of the adjuster, one of two of the adjuster nuts. This is the bottom one here. This is to get the main bulk adjustment for this and then the final on the fly is up by your your um your lever up on top so what i generally do is i'll twist some and rotate and what i'm doing is i'm i'm trying to listen for a little bit of the brake pad starting to touch the rotor and then i'll stop
Oh, you hear it. It's right about there. So that's kind of what you'd want to hear. And then I'm going to go a little bit more. And I'm going to stop right there because you hear it touching the rotor once in a while. That's the run out. Chi chi ching, chi chi ching. So that's the run out. So that's good enough. And then from here, you would take it for a test ride. You would feel the responsiveness of the brakes. If the brakes feel like they're not grabbing enough, you're going to go up to the top where your lever is and give it a little bit of adjustment at a time until you feel like it's responsive enough, but yet not too much. And then you're going to put it up on a pedestal like this and rotate the tire. If you can spin it and it freely spins, then you're good. If it comes to a stop where if I pull this in and it doesn't freewheel or it does that, that's too much. So you want to get it so that it, it does rotate and you hear that chi chi ching and then stops. Because obviously this has the motor, it's got resistance from the motor, so it's not going to freewheel completely. So let me take you to the front. I'll show you the front also. Okay, so we're at the front. And you could see how that fr pretty much freely spins. Now from here, you could lessen it a little bit. or you can make it a little bit more drag to uh, for your liking. This Now this here, like I said before, uh, the less you could do, the better, but if you're, you don't feel comfortable with the responsiveness of your brakes, obviously you're gonna put more drag on this so that you feel a little bit more confident in the scooter's braking. So let me show you the top now. All right, so we're up here by your handlebars now, and you have your brake levers. You have the locking nut, which ultimately locks your setting into place. That's this one here. And then this is your fine tuning right here. So as you want more responsiveness, you would turn out like this and then if it's too much or you think you can go less to get less drag down below you would turn it in like that and then once you feel comfortable where it is then you're going to take this ring here and lock it into place up against this if you don't have enough of power in your fingers Use a little uh, pair of pliers or something just to kind of lock it into place so that the vibration doesn't drive this in. And now you go to break and you're pulling way in and going, what the heck happened? It doesn't, it doesn't uh, have the response like it did before. So same thing on the other side. This ring against the casing here, that is your lock. You would spin this out and then make your adjustments accordingly. And then screw this back in. And like I said, if you don't have enough power in your fingers to really lock this in place, get a pair of pliers and kind of like snug it up because you don't want this coming out, this vibrating in, you going to go like this and you go all the way and touch the handlebars. So that would be a bad situation. And these do have quite amount of play here that this could come in a lot. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I'm not an expert on these. Um, I'm trying my best for what I know. Um, I would like to start um, tinkering with them and messing around with the performance and all. I'm just not there just quite yet. Um, if you have any suggestions for videos, also let me know. 
Thanks for watching. I never knew that this many people were into these scooters like I am. They're extremely fun. So I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.